Hey everybody, it's Harry from Super Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. I'm in my backyard again and I'm going to do a viewer request. Since like you, I have been asked to shelter at home because of the pandemic. We're going to do a shootout today between the, the uh, smoke fire right here and compare the smoke fire against the GMG. You guys know that I've been a long time GMG fan. I've used GMGs for over a dozen years, so you guys asked me which one is a better pit for cooking brisket. So we're gonna find out in this throwdown between the GMG Jimboey and the Weber Smokefire EX6. Down today with the uh, smoke fire versus the uh, GMG Jim Bowie Weber versus GMG. I'm gonna cook uh, two briskets here, competition style. I chose competition style because I wanted to get the best possible results. You guys have seen many of my videos where I cook it the old salt and pepper Texas style. If you want to do one of those recipes on your brisket, by all means do so. I have 20 30 videos on how to cook brisket already. On this particular episode, I'm just gonna do a competition style cook because I want to see the full potential that the smoke fire can can result in versus the GMG Jim Bowie. So we're shooting for perfection here. I have two briskets here from uh, the uh, folks at the Angus Beef. Uh, these are superior Angus briskets, about nine, 10 pounds each, uh, kind of small, but we want to show you guys how we can cook these briskets to absolute competition perfection. I also want to take this opportunity to introduce a uh, kind of a giveaway here. Uh, the nice folks at Dal Strong have been um, sponsoring me with knives now uh, they like what i do on my channel they saw me mangling my meat with knives that are not sharp so uh, they saw me cutting my meat with a chef knife when i actually should be using a slicer so those nice folks at Dell strong and m in particular sent she sent me a whole series of knives so now i have a full set of knives needed to cook barbecue you typically need a chef's knife uh, you need a slicer for your brisket a santoku knife is really very handy and very importantly you need a little a boning knife uh, this one is uh, one of their new knives it's called quantum and uh, it's a beautiful knife here it comes with its own sheath and guess what uh, they have authorized me to do a giveaway for one of their quantum boning knives so i'm going to figure out uh, after this video i'll post it in the description how we're going to do the giveaway uh, I haven't had a chance to read, uh, you know, YouTube's uh, rules regarding giveaways, but I believe there's a way for me to somehow give one of my viewers and subscribers uh, one of these knives. You'll be shipping from Delstrong. So uh, just stay tuned and read the description of the video to figure out how I'm going to do the giveaway or I'm going to be posting on social media like Facebook, Gram, uh, and Twitter and so on. Always uh, make sure that you don't wash your meat, throw your perch, which is the liquid in the bag, away carefully. If you want to know why you don't do this, it's because you're going to spread pathogens all over your kitchen sink and your faucet. And for those of you who don't believe me, I'm going to send you all of the USDA videos that tell you not to do so. Let me uh, do a little uh, overview of the competition trim we're going to be doing. In competition trim, we're not concerned with uh, the yield, it's only just to cook uh, some perfect slices like for example on this brisket it will appear here for the uh, box here right so we're not so worried about that when you buy briskets there's four criteria I told you guys before in my previous videos is size symmetry striations and marbling the striations are fat going this way and marbling is fat going on the edge here right as I told you before uh, if you see any kind of uh, oxidized spots like here on this brisket this is, does not mean the brisket has gone bad that means that the brisket was washed with hot water and some of the meat got scalded since i'm using a brand new knife it is razor sharp and uh i want to show you guys a very good tip here uh go out and spend ten dollars and buy yourself a kevlar cut glove i got my cut glove on and you can see i trimmed this part off here so uh this part is oxidized because of hot water wash of the carcass at the uh, factory or the plant where they produce the meat and they fabricated the brisket and on this side is all nice and red. This side is thing. You, it, it doesn't hurt the meat. You can cook it this way, but I just like to trim it off because this is gonna be a competition trim. So that's the piece that comes off. We we'll trim off some of the fat here. So wow, this knife really is really sharp. I can feel it slice through the meat like butter. Put your hand underneath the brisket. Get rid of some of the fat here. Get rid of the silver skin beneath the fascia. So get rid of the fat here. So there's a gash here, a little bit of a gash. 
So I'm going to shave it underneath the gash. This sometimes happens in the meat cutter. It's not careful. A little bit of oxidation here again on this side. Trim it off. This Angus brisket has nice marbling. So you can see the marbling right here through the edge here. What we do next is we cut off the fat between the point and the flat. I start. I like to start with the eye. You can start anywhere you want. Trim away the this eye of fat here. Just be very careful when you do this. Don't cut yourself. Run your knife into the layer of fat between the point and the flat here, like so. You don't have to do such a severe trim for those of you who want to do a backyard trim by all means. I have so many videos already on how to do a backyard trim, but this is a shootout between the smoke fire and the Jim Bowie GMG. So I'm going to do a full on competition cook with injection and everything. And uh, if you don't want to do it this way, no problemo. Just cook it the old uh, kind of a backyard backyard style of a restaurant style of brisket. But this is the full on competition brisket. I'm going to cook two of them. We're going to season them the same way. I know some of you are going to ask me, hey, Harry, you're cooking two briskets on two pits. How can it be a good comparison? Well, you know, that's the best I can do. Unless I can uh, have the cow. Uh, if I can get two briskets on one cow, the left and right brisket, then it will be a fair test. So this is by no means a scientific or mathematically rigorous test. So please don't send me all those comments saying that there's no control or there's no way to know if the two briskets are the same. I know that. All right, so here's the brisket. Here's the beautiful area called the point. The point is where you get the cubes of burnt ends come from. I have a little bit of a bulbous part here. I don't know why the point muscle stretching out this way, but we're gonna try to make the most of it. This is a uh, brisket that's gonna be uh, kind of after I cook it, I'm gonna be giving it away. Uh, you guys know a lot of my barbecue work is for the philanthropy. And uh, a lot of the meat that I cook uh, after after I shoot my videos, I give it to law enforcement, firefighters, medical personnel. And uh, a lot of the proceeds from my barbecue business, including all the revenue from all the affiliate sales. Uh, when you buy stuff from Amazon, Amazon give me some money. A lot part of the proceeds go to Watch Cherry. So you guys know that uh, I support Operation Homefront, which is the charity that takes care of the troops the active personnel, their families, and then veterans. Also, uh, when you watch my channel and you support me, uh, it's used to help another charity called Save the Children. Because uh, as we sit here cook barbecue in this pandemic, uh, every day 20,000 children around the world die due to poverty, neglect, disease, and abuse. And uh, you know, you want me to help the world. I already do a barbecue for on the weekends for fun to help my viewers uh, learn how to master barbecue uh, because I already have a job. I build data centers for a living. Uh, I use my weekends for a little bit of barbecue philanthropy. Like today's Sunday and uh, I'm at home and this is a time when I really enjoy cooking and uh, teaching you guys how to create championship results uh, using some simple tips and techniques uh, as you watch my videos. A lot of these things that I show you are not good because I say so, because I want first place USA brisket, sirloin, chicken, you know, and a lot of 100 plus first places, many grand championships. So I'm showing you all these tips and tricks and people always ask me why, Harry, you show people all these tips and tricks. I show it to you because, you know, the world is really about giving and, uh, you know, you can't take this information with you. And uh, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, before I go, yeah, you know, I am able to leave something behind that's of value to you because when you cook barbecue and you spread love, the world needs more kindness, more compassion, more patience, and more respect for fellow human being. Uh, you notice I'm trimming away all of the fat from the point muscle. The brisket packer, which is the full packer like this, right, uh, has two muscles, pectoralis major, pectoralis minor. The pectoralis major is the area called the flat. The minor is the area, this area here called the point. The point muscle in Texas is typically called the fatty, and then the lean is called the flat. So you can go to Texas, when you go up to the counter, the pit master asks you, 
sorry, the meat cutter asks you, hey, you know, you want lean or fatty? Now you know how to sound like you know how to order brisket in Texas. Lean is the flat muscle. Fatty is the point muscle. Right? Just simple terminology here. Uh, I'm trimming away most of the uh, silver skin and the fat cap here because I want to create uh, beautiful burn ends on, on the uh, point muscle. People always ask me, Harry, how can you have so many ways to cook brisket? Well, you know, there are just so many ways to cook brisket, at least a hundred ways I can think of. Uh, as my channel continues to mature, uh, I'm going to be able to show you guys more and more different methods of cooking barbecue. I just cannot believe that, you know, you guys have been watching my, my cell phone pictures, uh, my cell phone video here, and uh, I'm almost at 100,000 subscribers. So I know that, uh, you know, sometimes my, my content is not the best in the world, not the best Steven Spielberg production. It's just me and my camera and a piece of me talking to you. Uh, but for those of you who have been supporting my channel, I want to kind of express my thanks. Uh, you know, we're approaching 100,000 subscribers, so I'll have a special message and hopefully a giveaway when we hit to that 100,000 milestone. So go tell your friends and, uh, you know, share the love of this world as we all kind of uh, cruise our way through this uh, situation that we all face with the pandemic here. Uh, it's really very, very scary that the world has become like, like this, but we can always stay at home, enjoy family, use the opportunity to master our barbecue skills. When you trim brisket for competition, you really are not interested in the yield. You're only interested in making sure that you can get some beautiful slices against the grain. You see the grain is running this way. You're going to slice it against the grain to get about eight slices of beautiful flat muscle to serve the judges. And then we, I usually like to make burn ends and cube my point. You notice the grain for the burn ends area here called the point muscle. They run this way and they curve this way. So when you slice the burn end, you have to slice it 90 degrees against the grain like that. On the uh, flat muscle, you can see it, it runs this way. So you have to slice it against the grain this way, right? So the idea behind cooking a competition brisket is that you are only interested in getting perfect slices from the flat perfect cubes from the burn ends to, to win a $10,000 check. So for those of you cooking backyard, don't go listen to what I'm saying. Just skip forward to the video to watch the cooking section. But this is for those of you who are interested in how to cook a competition brisket. Since I'm doing a shootout between the two pellet cookers, I might as well go all out to see what results I can get. Because in case in the future I get to cook a competition, I know which of the two cookers I'm going to pick for a competition. So uh, the first thing you want to do in a competition is make sure that you get some of the overhanging meat off of the uh, flat here. So uh, the burn ends are best when both sides don't have any fat. So I trim the fat off this side, this side. So on this one here, you notice that the, the point muscle, I'm sorry, the flat muscle sits over the point. So I'm not going to get bark underneath here. So the first thing that comes off is this piece comes off like so. This is a pretty radical trim, so not recommended for backyard or for restaurants at all. Uh, you get a big chunk of meat like this. I'm going to cube it up here, make some uh, beef stew with it. Uh, if you want, I'm, I'll do a bonus roll on uh, beef stew on Instapot. That's what I do with all the excess meat here. Nothing that I cook on my videos goes to waste. We don't throw any of the meat away. We put it beside in a pile like so. And uh, we make sure that we use up the entire animal. Not, no, no part is wasted. Get some of the fat off here. So. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is uh, we wanna shape the point muscle. And uh, let's see here. There's a lot of the point I can use here. So like, like this one, I'm going to try to retain the shape. Uh, you notice that this part is kind of bulbous. This is kind of very thick. And uh, I'm going to start shaving the point muscle so it's, I can get nice cubes. So you can see it's very thick here. So between shaving from this side and shaving from this side, this side is less uh, uh, fatty. I want to keep the fat. So I'm going to shave it, flip it upside down. I'm going to shave it from this side. So, to create a flat surface to cut my little cubes from. So, okay, this one can go into the stew pot. On this back end here, it's a little narrow because my slices come from here. The slices uh, probably will stop here, like so, here to here. 
I don't need this part. So what I do is I cut at a 30 degree angle like so. So I can have an aerodynamic edge here so that there's less turbulence when I cook. This piece comes off. And uh, I'd like to round the edge off on this end so that it has a nice aerodynamic shape. The, the airflow is not turbulent around the edge. These are arcane details that you don't have to worry if you're cooking backyard. But if you're a competitor like me, you, know, you have to worry about those things. These are the techniques I used to win the uh, first place USA, KCBS Rancher Reserve Brisket Cup here. Okay, here we go. Okay. Now on this end here, you notice that the muscle is thick here, but very thin here. I'm not going to use this part because I'm going to get perfect slices from kind of this range here. So this part comes out. Again, another 30 degree cut like this at the incline. Save this piece for cooking later. And it looks pretty good now. All right, these two briskets are ready. Um, I'm going to trim off maybe. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm going to save this bump here. I can I can cut a few, few cubes from here. So here you go. Have it, two briskets ready for the next step. Competition style injection coming next. I have about 18 to 20 ounces of water. I'm going to today use a, a combination of two injections I like. This is Kettle Prod by Big Papa Smokers. And uh, this is uh, Cosmos Injection, the reserve blend by my buddy Darren Cosmos. Uh, these are great uh, uh, products to use. Uh, I have another video where I did a shootout of uh, eight different injections to tell you which ones I like. They all work well, uh, most of them do. It's just a matter of kind of preference as to kind of the final result you like. Some are saltier than others. About, uh, about two tablespoons of each will be fine. You don't have, you can make it stronger or lighter, it's up to you. And uh, what is nice about these injections is that they're competition grade, they don't, they don't stain the meat, which is uh, one of the considerations that you have. Not only do you have good flavor, but you have also good color on your meat. So just about four tablespoons, two of each, and you're good to go. Blend it up and let it kind of subside. competition brisket we like to inject for additional flavor if you're doing a backyard brisket you don't need to do this in order for you to inject you need to get one of these uh, injectors you can find these on amazon these are about maybe 10 bucks i have an amazon store link in the description if you want to buy all the doodads that i've torture tested and i like you can go ahead and uh, do that so we're going to use the injector and this is the brisket injection that we made earlier you can see that how the Foam has subsided and that's how it works when you put it in the refrigerator. It takes about maybe 45 minutes for it to kind of subside. I'm going to inject uh, about a uh, uh, maybe a quarter inch or half inch between the injection holes here. Squeeze it gently. Watch it swell. Pull my finger back. Move over another half inch or so, one inch. Continue to inject. Carefully inject about... Uh, I would say maybe uh, 10, 10 ounces uh, into each brisket or so. Give or take, don't worry if you you know don't have uh, the exact measurement. It doesn't really matter. This is one of those very rare things that you can do in barbecue. You cannot overdo because uh, when you overdo it, it just oozes out. I'm carefully injecting with the grain. Now, I know already you guys are going to ask me, who told you to inject with the grain? Uh, You've you got to inject against the grain. Knock yourself out. As I told you guys before, right? Everything in barbecue is a three-hour argument and Jerry Springer is fine. I'm just showing you what I have done to win first place USA brisket. I hope you guys realize that uh, this is out of my love for you and I want, really want you to be a winner in your backyard, winner in your restaurant business, a winner in your uh, catering, and a winner in competition if you are a competitor. Doesn't really matter what you want to do in life, so long as you're having fun, you're making a difference. In life, you always uh, say, you know, we want to make a living, but you reach a point in life where you want to also make a difference to people's lives. And there's nothing better in life than to leave something behind. I'm hoping that all these videos I put out on the internet, there's 250 of them already, uh, hopefully it become a treasure trove to people who want to spread barbecue love. I want to just point out some small details here, but it's important. So you see these large one centimeter holes. I went to great lengths to find the right caps. And uh, you know, when you buy my wrap, make sure that it has the one centimeter holes. 
I know that well, we had a little issue with uh, my co-packer. I think they put on the wrong cap on one in a batch of uh, rub. If you get a batch of rub that doesn't have the one centimeter holes, the rub will not pour properly. So I go to excruciating detail to design these fine details to make sure that even the rub, how it pours is very important. That's how you get a championship flavor. You want to shake the rub and then put some on. You want to stop when the bottom layer becomes opaque, right? And then you apply a second coating. This is called a double pad technique. Pat it down, and that is the perfect amount of rub. That, shake it, sprinkle it down until it becomes opaque. Stop, put another layer, so two layers. So it's called a double pat, double pat technique. As I've told you many times, you never rub a rub, you always shake a rub so that it is nice and even. These are small details. I've told you many times that win or lose the contest, $10,000 check flies out the window. If you have one missing shake, or one too many shakes of rub. So you gotta be really careful when you do this. I try to do this in light I can see, you know, even the sodium lighting in the parking lot can affect the amount of rub you put on. So you gotta be really careful. Uh, just a little factoid here, the, the underside of my canopy, when I compete my Slapper Daddy canopy, is actually white because when I was competing and uh, it was a sodium filled parking lot, I wasn't aware that the sodium lighting was interfering with my ability to gauge the amount of rub on it. I wasn't winning consistently, so I found out that the problem was the lighting. So now I carry a little white light that I can shine on my meat. But that's the kind of level of uh, precision that you need to be a champion. You got to watch all the details. Everything is important. And uh, win or lose, sometimes I won contests with a little as four ten thousandths of a point. Squad 790, the, the other team squad 790 also, but 14,000 behind. It's not for 100, not for 1,000, but 14,000 is the point. So that's kind of how close competitions are today in terms of the uh, amount of care you have to take. So first layer on, goes opaque. Second layer, pat it down. Second layer on, like so. And this will, on my rub, is calibrated to get you championship result with just two applications. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. About maybe eight to 10 inches above the meat so you can lie nice and even. So, right, make sure every, every bit of the meat gets covered. Backside also, don't forget the backside of your brisket. Flip it over like that. One layer, pat it down. Another layer, pat it down. Okay, perfect though. All right, ready to go and smoke it in the Jimboi versus the smoke fire from Weber. Let's power on a Jimboi and uh, turn it on. Okay, go into the start cycle. And let's power up the smoke fire. Two seventy five. Alright, starting up the uh, smoke fire and the DMG for our telecooker throwdown here. In case you guys want to ask me which one's running faster, the GMG is at around 145 on its way to 275. Uh, the uh, smoke fire is heating up a little bit faster, it's at 205, heading to 275. I'm going to wait until both pits are at temp before I put the brisket in, that way it's going to be a fair test. You notice that uh, I clean the pits and uh, there's no pan underneath the grates because I'm going to cook it as a stock smoke fire versus a stock uh, gym boy to get a fair test. Here's my trick where, with the uh, wooden blocks to prop it up so that it doesn't puddle. Same here with the wooden block also. With a nice shape to it. So a little kind of like a nigiri sushi roll with the brisket with the uh, hack with the wood underneath. Then we wood puddle. That's how I won uh, first place USA in the brisket uh, national KCBS championships. Same here. This is ready to go. Uh, if you guys want a tip here, uh, this is what I do. I take a little bit of Clorox wipes and then kind of put some tape on it. That way it does not make such a huge mess in your hands. Uh, this is what I 
learn from my sweetheart Donna. It's been about an hour. Let's give it a spritz. Brisket is drying up nicely. I did add a uh, piece of wood on the point area here. Beautiful crust here. Let's check on the uh, EMG. Very nice. It's taken about four and a half hours to reach this point where the crust has set. This one is cooked in the uh, smoke fire. This one is the DMG. Uh, we're ready to wrap now. I'm gonna put it in the foil pouch here. Make a little small boat like so. So we can hold uh, some of the liquid. Another black belt tip to show you guys. Let's have a mess here. The four bolt so and uh, as you put the uh, beef broth on straight strength you can see it absorb the brisket very important to rehydrate your brisket after you finish cooking so that the uh, brisket will be completely moist when you're done at this point in time if you put this mop on and the and the rub falls off you made a mistake of not cooking until the crust sets you need to establish the mallard reaction gently drizzle liquid let it take its time so rehydrate your brisket very good important part of cooking a good brisket is learning how to rehydrate in case you're asking me why am i not using butcher paper yes you can use butcher paper if you're not using a mop if you use butcher paper the butcher paper will be waterproof after the oil soaks in so if you're using a mop I prefer to use a foil. That works a lot better, in my opinion. If you try to use a mop when you use paper, there's a chance you tear because uh, the paper will not be watertight until you get uh, a little bit of oil on the paper. So, you know, this is a much better method, I think. Uh, one can is about right. It's a kind of a smallish brisket, but it's all good. At this point in time, you can cook back in your pit. Uh, I never do because uh, I'm too cheap and lazy. And uh, there's no need to run the pit and spend extra money in fuel because uh, BTU is BTU is BTU. You, once the brisket is wrapped, it doesn't know or doesn't care whether it's in the pit or in your oven. So we're going to put it back in the oven. Same temperature, 275. All right, so here's the GMG. Here's the uh, smoke fire. It's nice to have point muscle here. Using a Dell Strong slicer, this is the Shogun series. Thanks to the folks at uh, Delstrong for sending that to me. Super duper sharp knife. Let's judge the appearance. So the appearance on the smoke fire looks like this. The appearance on the GMG looks like this. Sort of about the same. Let's see here in terms of the outside bark. Maybe it is a little bit darker. Uh, smoke ring wise, uh, hard to tell. Let me see here. So if we compare side by side here this one let's see here against this one here okay uh i would give a hair to the smoke fire a little bit deeper smoke ring than the uh gmg just by a tad so you can see here it's kind of thin uh if you compare the smoke fire here just a little bit deeper, using the same exact method, same process, same brisket. A uh, little bit more smoke penetration here on the smoke fire. Bark is about equal, I think. Yeah, about the same. You can tell here, about the same. The one on this one is the uh, smoke fire, and that one is the uh, Jimbo GMG. So smoke ring, a tad nod towards uh, the... Uh, Smoke fire. Tender, tenderness about on par here. You can see here, nice accordion drape. So this one's pretty well done, pretty well cooked. Let's see here. Same here. So accordion pull. Okay, pull test. Ooh, very tender, beautiful. Perfect nine in tenderness. This one here. 
same perfect nine in tenderness. Let's do a taste test here. Okay, I've eaten my way through two rounds of eating the point muscle and the flat muscle. And uh, let me summarize by telling you kind of what I think. In terms of the bark and the crust, it's a Thai smoke ring, slight edge to the smoke fire, uh, nicer smoke ring than the uh, GMMG. This could be due to many factors, including the meat itself. Uh, I try to spray them exactly at the same time, run at the same temperature, using the same injection, same rub, same exact process. Taste-wise, this is very, very, gets very interesting. So. The, the point on the smoke fire tastes better than the point on the Jim Bowie GMG. However, the flat on the Jim Bowie tastes better than the flat on the smoke fire. So it's kind of a, I don't know how, how you judge this. It's going to be a kind of a hard way to judge it. So, you know, uh, hard to tell. Um, the tenderness are perfect on both of them because I cooked it perfectly tender. So they are both are very, very tender. So tenderness is a tie. So crust, tie, tenderness, tie, taste on the point, smoke fire wins, taste on the flat, <laughs> GMG, Jim Bowie wins. And then the, the Weber had a little edge on the smoke ring, just a nicer smoke ring. So I'm not sure how to make any sense out of this. So uh, they both are excellent brisket. So don't get me wrong, you can cook brisket in the smoke fire or the GMG. If you know what you're doing, uh, follow some of my tips on my YouTube videos, you will get a fantastic result. Now, which one wins uh, today? In my very limited test, we just one brisket on each uh, pit. I have to give a slight edge to the smoke ring because I think that the taste wise, the point on the smoke fire beat the point on the GMG Jim Bowie. The flat on the Jim Bowie beat the smoke fire. So, uh, so it's, it's kind of a tie in the taste. Uh, the only redeeming factor is, I would say, the GM, the smoke fire by a hair, like a, like a, a tiny little razor hair margin, because it had a just a slightly better smoke ring. But even then, you know, I don't know if the camera can, can can see the difference here. Just a slight difference between the two, not a big deal. Uh, but if I had to just judge it based on just numerical score, uh, I would give just a very tiny edge to the smoke fire today. So just one data point on each pit. Uh, is this conclusive? No. I always told you guys, right? Harry told you it's always about the pit master, never about the pit, never about the meat. In today's uh, anecdotal test, the smoke fire came out just a hair better on the smoke ring, all other things being equal and the variability of the meat itself and the cow that the brisket came from. So. There you have it. Uh, both are really good smokers. Uh, you can do well with either one, provided you know what you're doing. If you're a pit master, you need to learn how to do live fire cooking. What that means is you need to master your pit. Doesn't matter if you use a Kamado, a Traeger, a drum, a Weber Smoky Mountain, uh, you want to use a kettle, you want to use a pellet cooker. Uh, at the end of the day, it's the skill of the pit master that matters. I showed you guys some competition tricks here that we used on both these briskets. They're both really, really good eating. If you serve this for your family and friends, um, they will, you will blow them away. And uh, today, just by a hair, the Weber smoke fire ages out the uh, GMG just because of the smoke ring. But all, the, all else being equal, taste, you know, it's a tie. Crust is a tie. Tenant is a tie. So there you have it. A little bit longer conclusion, but I've been kind of scratching my head to how to describe this to you. But all is not done until the chief judge has a chance to eat it. So let me get beans. Right, beans, you ready? Oh, you're looking at me already? Okay, he's jumping on my chair. All right, so beans. This one here on the right-hand side is the one from the Weber. This is the Weber smoke fire on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, it's the Jim Bowie GMG. So ready? Give it a good look. Check for appearance, taste, and tenderness. Okay, go, go. 
Ho! <laughs> he took one from the smoke fire, one from the gym boy, two from the gym boy now, and back for the smoke fire. All right, so he did go for the smoke fire piece first. So I guess Beans, you and I agree, Pitmaster and Dog both agree that the smoke fire has a slight edge. So there you have it, another video from Harry from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue. Hope you enjoyed this fun cook. I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, the bottom line is that both pits are really, really good. In the hands of a good pit master, either pit will result in championship results. So don't fret, focus on cooking. Don't worry so much about the equipment. It's all about the pit master, never about the pit. Until the next time, we will see you in the next video.